Hello again, whiskey friends. Thank you for joining. All right, today we have a Starlight Bourbon finished in honey barrels. Honey barrels. Honey finished bourbon is one of like my favorite things. Never tried a Starlight honey finished bourbon. So we're going to break this one down and we're going to see what happens. Thanks for joining, everybody. Open that up. Get a cork pop. All right. That sounded pretty good. Now, with these starlights, they are age stated. Okay. So this one here was four years. I got this one at the party source. But if you see a honey finished one in general, or you've just been afraid of starlight, maybe this overall review will just help you. But I'm going to pour this in to a new Glen that I just got. Golden Glen from Whiskey Nose. Cheers, Marty. Go check out Whiskey Nose if you haven't already. All right, let's pour that in there. So with Starlight, you know, I've had a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Starlight so far. I'll be completely honest. I think I got a barrel of it, a bottle of it, you know, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago, and I was a little iffy. And then all of a sudden... I would say over the last year, every Starlight I have tried has been like very good. So now when we get to this one, when it was honey finished, I just knew I had to get it, give it a try, and we'll see how, how good this is. Now, these are age stated, but the age on these I think is a bit misleading. You know, I want to do some more research on this, but it's age stated at four years. I'm pretty sure they're blending barrels and then putting them in the cast to get finished and then calling that a single barrel. So even though it's age stated, I think that age statement means the youngest thing in it, not that it's four years old. So if I'm right, don't be scared by those age statements. Uh, correct me in the comments if I'm, if I'm right or wrong. But I've seen so many different finishes coming from Starlight lately. Cognac, honey, uh, cherry, double oak, toasted. I mean, they got like a whole line there. And they just seem to be, at least in northern Kentucky, on the, on the shelves. But, gosh, have I gotten some really good ones lately. I, and that doesn't scare me off then anymore. You know, I kind of look for these, and I'm not afraid to dive into them. This one is the first honey finished one I've seen, though. And I am in love with honey finished bourbons. Now, some of the times the honey can go a little too far. Sometimes it doesn't even add anything to it at all. So there's always a balance there when it comes to the honey. But I would say all of the honeys finishes I have had have been MGP up to this point. This is the first non-MGP honey finish that I've had. And it's still out of Indiana, though. So pretty soon we're going to see distilled in Indiana, and it's not going to mean as much as it does you know, now and previously. But let's get into the nose on this one. Cheers, everybody get into the nose uh, right off the bat this nose is really really good the honey isn't overwhelming but there is a tremendous amount of fruit coming out of this glass gosh even a little Gosh, not quite black licorice. Is blackberry licorice a thing? Oh, man. The honey is really enticing. And once again, it's age stated at four years. Doesn't come across as young. So don't be afraid of those age statements. We'll see if that translates to the palate, but this does not come across as young. Now, I don't think I got into it. The uh, proof on this one, too, was 114 proof. And then the cost on it, I believe, was 70 or 80. It might have been 80. But usually honey finished products are up there in price. 
yeah, there's just this real nice wheat bread note smothered in honey, you know, blackberry preserves. Very much just reminds me of something I'd have at brunch, you know, breakfast bourbon. Mm. All right. I'm going to go into the taste. You know, the nose wasn't giving me a whole lot of dynamic flavor notes, but what it gave me got me pretty excited. All right, in for the first taste. Ooh, good. Mmm. All right. This is a really good honey finish one. Now the honey is dominating. I'm not getting a whole lot of dynamic flavors off of it again, similar to the nose. But what was interesting about this one on first impression was that the honey actually had different layers at each step of the process. So it gave me that initial sweetness. It gave me some more sweetness on mid palate. And then it kind of came into a dark honey towards the back of the palate into the finish. All right, I'm going to go in again. Okay. A bit more youth came through on that taste than the prior taste, but nothing that turned me off though. It was just more grain forward, but really clean and crisp. Man, that honey though, that honey is dominating this one. Delicious, but not much is escaping that honey. I'll go in for another round and see if I can get more than that. Okay. There we go. Third sip. I'm starting to get a bit more. Still go with that blackberry preserves. That comes around mid palate. Up front, giving me a little apple. I'd say the finish turns back into an apple too. The fun part of this one's tracking the honey though. Just the fact that it starts out as a light honey, goes into a dark honey, goes into a sweet honey. I've never had a honey finish do that usually it's a if it's a good note it's usually a one noted thing and it just rides all the way through the palate but this one's got some waves to it all right last sip oh man that one gave me a really good finish still the same notes I'm just going to keep going back to that same notes, you know, that that toasted wheat bread smothered in honey with some blackberry res preserves on top. That about describes it. Gosh, it is good, though. The sweetness right now has really, really taken over. Ah. So with the honey finishes, in general, if you haven't gotten to try one, they can dominate the bourbon. So... When you're getting into a honey finish, I mean, you just got to like honey because it it can take over. And this one takes over in a good way. Would I recommend it for, I think it's $80. I don't think I would buy another one of this particular barrel. I probably keep my eyes open on it. You know, if I saw one that maybe was age dated a little higher, I might get it. I'm happy to have this one. It's really good. I think I'm going to give it to guests and they're going to enjoy it. But... You know, I'm hesitant to, I wouldn't buy a backup of this particular one, but just kind of listen to what the flavor notes were. If you really dig honey and you see a honey finished starlight, maybe it's worth a try for you. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you see a honey finished MGP, you know, I've got some from Boone County. Of course, there's the Bell Mead one. Never owned that one, but got to try it. Um, had some from, you know, various other places that are doing honey finishes. But I think that Boone County one's probably my favorite. All right. With that said, thank you for joining from this, joining me with this tasting, everybody. I'll catch you later, whiskey friends. Bye, everybody.